Hey guys, this is going to be the fourth and final video on my T70 series. So I'm going to be showing in this video how to, um, or how I made the tracks um, for the vehicle since my other three parts have covered the um, hull shape, hull detailing, and turret respectively. So first off, I'd like to say, like, I'm sorry that this video took so long to get out. Um, real life hit, lots of stuff happened, had to be out of town for a while, but um, I'm back and I am now recording this video so hopefully this recording goes well and I can post it rather than having to re-record a few times but yeah I'll just get straight into it so when I'm building tracks my first step is usually to make the wheels well always because you need the reference for doing the tracks I'm gonna go back and um, skip to when I or what the wheel looks like Sorry, I, my nose got nasally for a second so like the first step is just to build something like this just a wheel and a basic suspension arm and the wheels aren't too bad. You can see that there's a little to it um, here, but like it's kind of just building out. Um, I like to kind of refer to it as like hamburger style, where you're kind of stacking things to get into the shape rather than doing like a revolve or anything. Although I do a revolve for this part because it's kind of, well, it's not too complex, but it, it simplifies the operations. But you could also do this just by stacking a few circles on top of each other with, um, a sort of taper on this piece and this piece but yeah and then bolts pattern the bolts and then the suspension arm pretty straightforward um, for this piece I set up a reference that's right in the middle of this um, like so it's kind of the interface and then I just do a revolve rather than trying to make a plane that is um, even between the two um, like that goes straight between um, both these cylinders so what I do is I um, make the sketch and I can just draw like a point that connects to the center of the wheel and a point that connects to the center of the suspension mount and then when I revolve it it's perfectly aligned um, and then some fillets and stuff just to clean it up so the wheels aren't too bad it's kind of I'm not going to belabor the point because it's, it really depends on how you're doing the wheels for your vehicle but kind of structurally I do a wheel and then I um, use the pattern so sometimes, like here, it's pretty easy. You just do a copy, a mirror, and then um, there's an offset because it's torsion bar. So you can see, well, no, there, yeah, there is a slight offset. So the wheels, um, well, perspective, yeah, you can see that the wheels on the front are offset because the torsion bars can't really intersect. So there's that kind of offsetting so that one bar goes in front of the other bar um, on the interior of the vehicle. So I, I try to model that where possible because it's not too difficult. It does mean you can't mirror the finalized track. You do have to wrap it on both sides independently, but it's not too bad. So that's what that um, second offset is once I, um, or second like move copy is after I mirror it, is just that offset. So, um, and in some cases the wheels aren't evenly spaced. So you might need to do a few moves where you like move one and then move another and then move another and move another because if they're not evenly spaced, doing an even space pattern isn't gonna accurate like a t34 is a good example where it has two and then three with the larger gap between those two sets and then i do the idler wheels which again in this case it's 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 just the same as the road wheel um like it's literally the same type of wheel so i just copied that moved it and then mirrored it and in the case of the idler wheels um they're the tensioning wheels they don't offset at all so i skipped that part and i just did a mirror um, this cut extrude is just taking off the suspension arms because there's no suspension on the idler. It's just a tensioning wheel. So there's a tensioning mechanism, but not a suspension arm. Although sometimes they're kind of related, like the patents, which is cool, but not too relevant. Um, return rollers, again, similar process of just modeling the wheels, a little tapered cylinder for the mount to the hull. So not as much detail as like, there could be. And here is a good example of where the wheels were individually patterned because you can see it's not an even gap. There's a different drop in the like vertical height and also different horizontal spacings. So I do the first wheel um, with the move pattern and then I copy it to um, a third wheel, but I have to do them independently. And then again, they just mirror to the other side. So not, not too bad. Um, sprockets, sprockets are kind of fun to make because like you can see it's, it's cool geometry. It's not too, too complicated, but there's more operations to it. So I'll um, talk about that in more detail. So here I started with doing the transmission housing. So I just have this mount. So what's going to happen is you can see it goes in front of the hull, but there's going to be like a gear here that connects to the transmission. 
and then um, or not a gear that connects but like a gear that is on a shaft that's connected to the transmission that goes to a second gear up here which is going to connect to the sprocket um, and then um, start the sprocket so I do the wheel centered on the um, same axis or the same plane that this, the wheels are centered on so that was kind of redundant but um, one tooth and I always make the tooth horizontal um, outward facing because it makes the tracks much easier if they're if the first track link is a vertical track link rather than having to have a horizontal like angle that is tangent to the wheel and then I um, count how many teeth there are and pattern it and not too bad and then just kind of start filling in the detail of the sprocket so doing some of the like this inset and then the bolts patterning the bolt around but you could do in the same step as patterning the teeth if you wanted to, but you don't have to. I'm not like too against having redundant operations or extra operations if it makes it easier to follow what's going on for myself. But if you really wanted to, you could compact a lot of things into the same operations, but I don't know that there's much benefit. Maybe there's a runtime benefit, but still, it makes it more complicated. So yeah, just adding details, rounding some stuff out. Um, this is a tapered cylinder just to um, connect the wheel to the transmission um, and some more just kind of cleaning it up cleaning it up um, this bolt is part of the transmission housing and then I created a curve that went around the transmission housing that way I could pattern the bolts around that curve so you can see this curve is just the transmission housing so not too bad and then when you pattern it around that curve you get it circling over the entire like more complex shape which I is the same way I do the tracks which I'll, I'll elaborate more when I get to that point but it's pretty straightforward to create like a bounding curve and pattern along that curve with a curve pattern tool which you would find in under linear patterns just curve pattern curve driven pattern and th that's where composite curves are really useful because if you don't have a composite curve it's going to go over like just the circular part or just the straight part but the composite curve turns it into one curve that then it can pattern over the entire thing. And then I have this axis, which is just the center axis of the sprocket, um, because what I wanted to do, I believe, is use that as a reference and then use the um, top plane as a reference to get this um, plane, although it looks like I used this top part of the bolt as a reference. And what that lets me do is do a um, revolved cut to get the, because that's like the center axis in a plane to draw on for the um, sprocket. And then I can do these like taper on the outside of the um, teeth. I could also do a fillet, um, or I guess a chamfer in this case, um, off this like this edge. But then I need to select it for every single tooth on both sides. So it's just kind of faster just to do a revolve cut. And then um, bolts on the inside of the transmission housing, just for detail. And then I um, set this combine. Where I'm, so before now... I believe they're separate parts. There's a lot of parts, but you've got the transmission and then the wheel separately. So I'm just combining them into one piece and then I mirror it and it's on the other side. So that's, that's how I set up all the wheels. And now the fun part or kind of fun part, it's a little bit of work, but the tracks. So I make one track link and it's, it's not terribly complex, but I'll give some pointers. So what I do usually is tracks are usually symmetric. So I do, First off, a slot um, that ha it intersects the wheel a little bit because if you do that, you don't get zero thickness geometry errors. If you don't do it, you might. So, tip. Um, and I always center it on the sprocket wheel and then do some math, or not really math, but some construction geometry to center the um, like the rounded parts so it's um, concentric with the intermediate point between these two teeth. And, that, and then uh, since it's a center point um, slot, that will be true down here as well. And then I just start cutting out. So here I'm cutting out like the kind of um, hinge pieces, um, the tooth um, or the tooth centers. And I'm doing half the track because, again, it mirrors. So it's easier to do half and then mirror it. And it's just kind of cutting out details. I start with these subtractive details. So it just kind of builds out the shape. And this, this curve is um, from the side view. It's just because it kind of tapers, or not tapers, but it kind of has like an inward slope or curvature concavity and then some fillets just to clean it up um, more cleaning it up um, then it's just, so it's just adding these 
pieces of geometry slowly. Um, so build it up however you want to build up your track. It's not too difficult. Well, I don't want to say that. It, it's time consuming and it, you have to practice, but once you get it down, it's a pretty straightforward. It's just bought, like extrudes and cuts mostly just to kind of fill it out and then the chamfers just to clean it up a little bit. Um, just capturing all the detail. Um, mirror it so it's on so it's a symmetric track link and it's the full link. And then I'm going to mirror it onto the other side because I need to wrap the track around on both sides. So I have one track reference for each side. And then the track wrapping is going to get you to the stage where um, everything's one piece. And that's um, I've covered this in its own video, so I have guide curves for both sides. So I have a left guide and then a right guide. And they look very similar, but you can see that the um, th this offset is different because the wheel offset's different. And then I just do the patterns um, individually. So I pattern the left side with a curve pattern. And if I open that, it's going to lag. But um, I covered this in my um, track video, so um, that should be covered. But um, essentially, you're selecting one link, and then you have this cur composite curve for the um, like trajectory, and you just pattern it along that trajectory. It needs to be tangent to curve, and there's an offset tool um, in the operation as well. Like maybe if I just open it, yeah, I can just open the operation. So this offset curve and transform curve, I'm kind of have trouble figuring out which does which, I, like off the top of my head. So I just kind of cycle between them until it looks right. But yeah, tangent to curve, um, and the direction is the composite curve, and then you want to do bodies down here, and select the track link. So that's how that's done. Um, and then when I'm setting the number of um, links, I calibrate it to the sprocket. So I, I just kind of add links. Usually I set it to like 70 or 80, and then I add links until the sprocket lines up with all the teeth, or all the like holes in the track, and then it looks pr like this. It looks pretty good. And then I just commit it. And then what I do is I do a pattern where I combine all the track links together without the wheels. And then I combine all the um, track links and wheels together. And then I do the same for the other side. And here I've got the tracks as separate assemblies. And then the hull and the turret. The turret's going to stay separate because that way you can um, rotate it, which is always important for a tank. And with the um, tracks, I'm playing around with the idea of separate tracks that you can print individually and then mount to the hull because it would be better for um, filament printers. So that's one of my future goals is to incorporate that with my models and kind of retrofit them. But for resin printers, I find it's a little harder to paint, but you get the suspension lining up better and I think it looks nicer overall to have the tracks built into the hull. So that's my preference and I realize that many people have different preferences. So I am working to modify my approach so that you have options for both. So that's pretty much how all this works. Um, yeah, so that's that's how I made this tank throughout these four parts. So I hope you enjoyed. I hope it was useful. And if you like this kind of format of um, doing a full tank over several videos, it's a lot of work just to organize everything to make it easier to follow. But if that's something you enjoy, let me know, and I might, um, well, I will try to um, have more vehicles. And if you have requests for vehicles to cover in that format. That might be a form of content I can do more regularly because I, I, I've mentioned this several times. I have a lot of trouble like thinking about what to make videos on because I've been doing SOLIDWORKS for so long that a lot of stuff I just know and it's kind of like hard to comprehend or that's a bad wording. It's kind of like I just don't know what's challenging for people and what's not and I don't want to make videos that are really obvious because there's so many of those already. But um, I also want to cover things that people find challenging, and I just have trouble knowing what's what. So if you have any specific requests, I'd love to fill those out. But yeah, thank you for watching.